What's up folks, welcome to another episode of Meet the Leader, Cyrus, stop being distracted by the car, here's the camera, we are in the waiting lounge of Apollo Tires, what a pod it is, it's like heaven, Ron. I can hear myself, and we are going to meet Mr. Satish Sharma out here, who is the Pshya Pass, oh there, there he is, thank you so much, hello Satish, welcome, welcome. good evening, welcome, good evening, Cyrus. so this is it's Mr. Satish Sharma, he is the president of Apollo Tires, India, Asia Pacific, Africa, that's Half the world. In the entire world, he is a legend, a veteran. I can't wait for the chat to begin because there's going to be a lot of insights about tires. You know, we've got some important questions for you today. Exactly. So I have a lot of homework and research done. So I'll often be referring to uh, the phone here. The first question, you know, the first time I fell in love with tires, was when I was a child. I don't know how old I was, but nothing beats the feeling of freshly baked chunky tires for an automotive enthusiast. You know, when we were younger and we had like these chunky tires slapped onto a car, girls like them as well. I mean, I remember getting girlfriends because they liked my chunky tires. Oh, the Honda City, when you slapped them yeah, on. Yeah, of course. It was really interesting. When was it that your love with tires started? How did it progress? Interesting, and I thought that nobody's going to ever ask me this kind of a question. I was born much earlier than you guys and the automotive scene was not really the most happening so I didn't have many girlfriends to impress. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember, you know, my middle school when I learned to drive on a jeep, in an army jeep. My father was in the Indian army and that was a good experience and tires, I distinctly remember those, those tires in the jeeps, very different patterns uh, with those SUVs, mean machines. While doing engineering, I did my summer internship and you won't believe it, it happened in a tire company. It was Modi Continental uh, in Meerut. Looking back, I can only say it was destiny because uh, even before I graduated, I started going onto the shop floor of a tire company. And your journey at Apollo Tires has also been a, a, a fantastically famous one. You have been here since 1997. Uh, that's what my homework here says. And, uh, oh, that's correct. It, Your homework it, is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. From being a chemical engineer to being a brand manager to being here where you are. I mean, I can't wrap my head around the fact, how does one achieve so much? Achievement is a relative word. The basics, like I guess for everyone, it's the lot of hard work. Great colleagues that I work with. Everybody sort of come together. The whole ecosystem sort of enabled it to happen. You know, you mentioned the uh, first internship you had at a tyre factory. Mm. The smell of fresh tyres for me, as a petrol head, is one of those legendary car smells. You know, fresh petrol, fresh tyres, stuff like that. And putting on a fresh set of tyres on a car is, for normal people, it's just a thing. But for, for people who like cars, it's a better experience. So it's a... He really loves cars. I, I do some, love some my car, yeah. Cars. <laughs> like a good cup of coffee. Yeah. Tyre aroma is very distinct. If you ever go to the factory in the first whiff, that you get in your nostrils. It's very unique and I've often thought about this point that why has no perfumery or sort of bottled this essence? And maybe it's a good idea coming from this so discussion like that we are having today. I, I might just take this idea to someone and say that, you know, let's just capture this very distinctive uh, aromas. Apollo, of course, global standards make in India. The Indian market You've seen a tectonic shift in the way people buy cars from what we used to look at earlier, how nice does the car look, what features does it have. A lot of people now are talking about safety uh, when they buy a new car. Does that same standard also apply to when they buy a new tyre, especially with these new norms coming in for tyres? In my opinion, uh, on safety, it's still the government pushing it, the regulations, government brought in the crash tests. You saw what was there in the crash test, where we were, Absolutely. where we have to go. So. Tires do take a, a much lower down the priority with respect to safety, though it is the most essential for safety. <laughs> so again, regulations will increase the awareness. It's this year where, where these things will get rolled out. The AIS 142, mm. the BE, the star labels. And I think the consumer awareness as an industry, we have to work, work on it. And the consumers would, for the first time in India, have variables to choose from. The performance will get granulated into many other things except kitna chalta hai ye tire. So we have got products which claim to do 100,000 because that's where the interest lies in India and less on these performance parameters. There are consumers who have but it's less. So I think this interest is going to grow and maybe a few years down the line it will be an important parameter. Our viewers want to get to know you 
What does your day look like? I hear Satish sir is an avid sports person, extremely passionate about fitness, marathon running. And how do you find the time to do all of these things? Because clearly we need the fitness tip, don't we? It's, yeah, you do. <laughs> The time aspect is a quintessential question, <laughs> which everybody has. Right. I guess well, you, you get the time when you want to do something. It's as simple as that. So I get up very early and I have a very good ecosystem of people who guide me and coach me and sort of motivate and inspire me to do what I have to do in the morning. So what time do you wake up? I get up anywhere between 3.45 and 4.30. So exactly so when we go to sleep. Are you serious? <laughs> 3.45? So it's just my elixir, you can say. And and so office starts at uh, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. for you? Actually, it starts in my car, so it's much early. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I start from my home at 10 to 8, so. Similar to you us. You will never manage that. No, but we do. We go for shoots. The only difference is. The difference, mm. I will tell you, is he's famous on the internet because he is found sleeping in a car. <sighs> he just mentioned his day begins in a car. So, I, but it's very important for our young viewers to understand how consistent one has to be. And I think you also mentioned coaching right early in the morning. Should one always have a coach? One should have a coach if one can. Uh, one needs, it depends on what is your target. My maxim is to be a better version of myself. That right. needs a coach. I'm making a note to myself, get a coach. With that, I think it's time we come to the products. We've had the good fortune of driving the Aptera uh, 80s, HTs, yeah. then the Aptera 80 Oh, we had that lovely Altering. time with the Thar when we went off-road with the yes. Alterains as well. There was a series we uh, did called the Bucket List yeah, where I've we went that. to... Oh, you did? Yeah. You, yeah. you are the, the biggest CV tyre manufacturer yeah. in, in the country. So we say we move the country. More than one third of the country moves on us. You, you folks are really good with taglines. I think something else which is very huge very big was uh, when we got to sample Vredstein and uh, that was something where uh, performance tires uh, that you got to India, we slapped them onto super bikes, super cars at Booth International Circuit and had great laps. Oh, that was a good move, wasn't that it? That was a big, big move. See, it's a heritage brand. Uh, we're very, very proud owners of, uh, of the brand. We're just so happy to bring them to our country as the performance market is beginning to grow. We feel the timing is just right. The, the market reception is extremely encouraging. Yes. And I think it's just the beginning of a very, very virtuous journey ahead of us. We're going to get tire ratings in our country now and it's hugely interesting. It's just coming up. If Kartikeya were here, he would be talking a whole lot about oh, it yeah. because he loves to be a lexicon, an encyclopedia and all these things. And uh, uh, oh God, this is not going to go good. Uh, what is he doing here? Uh, mm -hmm. sir, that's Karthik. Uh, he, uh, uh, he'll have uh, good questions actually. Good afternoon, sir. Really, hey, really nice to meet you. And really nice to meet you guys. Hello. You started early. That's yeah. great. Yeah. You know, there are some of my favorite questions which happen at the start of an interview, and I'm really keen to be there. But I may have missed that. But just to run through that, because meeting somebody like you for us is a little intimidating. So we like to start with. Possibly when you were intimidated, did you ask that question, the first interview? The f no, no, no. Uh, that's Your what first job interview? It makes us feel nicer because knowing that you may have been nervous at some point. I was very nervous. I was totally blank. Oh, yeah? And I moved <laughs> it. And I didn't get to make it. Are you serious? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, whoever's watching and you know that, you know. Everybody it, has it, it happens. bad day. Yeah. Do you get nervous even today? I'm a human. You do? Everybody does. That Everybody makes me feel normal. Yeah. Everybody yeah. does. Kind of we were nervous before this one. Really. I was nervous when Kathik actually walked up there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we'll that's that. a good point for me to ask you another question. You're leading a behemoth of a group today, which is global. So what, what are the traits that you look for in people today now, when you're looking for people to be a part of your team? They said you'll ask good questions. I, I did, yes. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, so yeah, I think number one on the list would be uh, passion. The ability to innovate and uh, doing things differently. Then of course blending the culture, integrity, teamwork, extremely important. In today's world and complex projects that we deliver, no one person, no one individual could can deliver everything. So it's all about the team. I uh, somehow, as you were running through the qualities, uh, ended up matching how many of my qualities uh, are there. I'm sure uh, you have all of them. Now if you had to choose between Cyrus and Rohan, 
who would you choose to be a part of your team? Mm. Why would you spend enough time with them by now? Considering they start early, they ask lots of tough questions. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they've shown a lot of initiative. Yeah. So we haven't spoken about this, but the best way to do this, solve this conundrum, <laughs> is to, is I'll invite all three of you for a game of golf. Ah. Golf. So the one who plays golf no better is the one that you will hire. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. Are we allowed so, to drive the golf carts though? <laughs> <laughs> we can, yeah, we, we, can, we can arrange that. We could probably we do a review arrange. on them or something. <laughs> How do you break up and make sense of what needs to be done where, I mean, you know, let's let's talk about just within India. The different kinds of consumers. On one, ha one hand, you have resting, you have your mass market tires. How do you tackle these customers differently? How do you talk to them, especially in a market like India where tires are not top priority for everybody? Rather than as a problem, we see it as an opportunity. Spans of the customers and needs one from a commercial vehicle category or a farmer or an SUV driver or a motorcyclist enthusiast versus a commuter motorcyclist. Mm -hmm. All of them look at things so differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course for us to, to be able to offer all of that uh, exactly and surpass those expectations is quite interesting. Actually. What's the secret sauce to your time management while you are doing so many things? Going back to your question on what do we look for in people, so we've got a great team, so they make me look good. I think he's a great boss. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to take a yeah. shot on that. And the short answer is, you know, you prioritize your issues. Carol. Prioritize and left, issues. Leave everything to the team to do. The most important question, government is trying to push India as an EV hub. And you're taking big steps in making EV tires. What does that mean for designing tires, EV tires? Yeah, it's definitely a new challenge and it's very much in its evolutionary stages. Just like as the auto world, you know, in India at least, uh, some of them are tweaking their existing vehicles. Yeah. And then somebody is saying, born electric. Similarly for us, it's not that our existing portfolio cannot uh, do the job for an electric, uh, but can it really do what the electric powertrain is wanting and is capable of and pushing the boundaries. Frog delivery, the noise levels, the suppression of the noise because so many moving parts gone out of the vehicle, the tire noise becomes very prominent. Right. So life to me has been, you know, optimizing the trade-offs. You want fuel efficiency uh, and you want life on the other hand, it's a completely polarized requirement. But how do you optimize these uh, parameters which the, and bring in a great product. They are going to have a launch of an EV tire in the first week next month I believe. And so I am really looking forward to undertaking more journeys here with Cyrus. For coffee. With, on, in, in the meantime, uh, with new vehicles, they are getting more expensive and EVs will be more expensive. Would dedicated EV tires also be more expensive so to speak? It will depend. I mean. Uh, it's a difficult question to, to be able to put a price tag to... The to construction do. techniques be different in that uh, sense or the technology in use per se for dedicated EV vehicle tires. Yeah, so, so we do not know exactly how it will play out. But it would not be greatly different. But it could be okay. to some extent. And, and a great EV tire would make for a fantastic ice tire but not necessarily vice versa. Could you explain why? Because in my head, a great EV tire is basically maximizing all efficiencies possible, isn't it? Wouldn't that translate to a great ice tire as well? These are sort of diverging technologies. See the whole weight dynamics, the mass of the vehicle uh, versus what you have here is very different. So the kind of trade-offs that you have done to get a great EV tire, those very trade-offs may be counterproductive to the performance of when you are running mm -hmm. on a thoroughbred IC product. Would you consider India as a petri dish for testing out such new tires, new technologies? Because of the, you know, we got every condition, every terrain, harsh reality. Extremes. extremes. Absolute extremes. Yeah, in India is definitely a good testing ground, but not necessarily that the Indian template will apply to the whole world. Ah, okay. Follow up question to that is tire exports jumped by 50% since my homework here in 2021 and 2022. Uh, do you expect India to become a tire manufacturing powerhouse? Yeah. This is a is very it? good question. Uh, Thank, Thank you. Very good question. The potential exists. 
Let me put it like that. The potential for India to do orbital shift to be a very major, significant world player. So we are currently probably two to three percent of the world trade, but we could be twenty to thirty percent. Wow. wow, that's, that's the because we have the technology, we have the India is a great testing ground. Indian automotive ecosystem is very much the largest or amongst the largest across categories. There's the largest motorcycle producer, fourth largest yeah. car, largest tractor, fifth largest CV maker, and only improving. The rankings are only improving, and the technologies are getting. The way the world is playing out, the geopolitics and everything, India is emerging as a big manufacturer and could potentially be really a big player. The government also has to give its blessings right. and enable it to happen. If you were to ask you to forecast or like do a little bit of fortune telling, 2030 would be relatively easy, but like if you were to say 2040, when do we see a smart tire? Will it still be a rubber tire? Uh, will it, yeah. I don't know. Bluetooth. App for tire. NFT tires. NFT tires. <laughs> I think that's NFT. Just let me answer sorry. The yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, you're giving me any ideas, and I need to listen to all of you. Yeah, my to my mind, tire is going to play the role of being a major portion of being the connected ecosystem of an automobile. There is so much of data to be picked from the ground and the terrain and build it into so many use cases. So that's the journey that needs to be traversed. Obviously, there will be an intelligent tire, it will be a smart tire. We are also doing a project called Talking Tire. Oh, uh, things I'm the tire, the tire doesn't talk. Yeah. Yeah. Communicate. It, yeah, it can mean in many things to many people. So, there could be plenty of no, use cases much. that can be visualized. Maybe I, I, I came to know that, uh, you know, there is an on-off or dual-purpose two-wheeler tire that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, the trampler. Thank you. Yeah. You it guys know it. everything. His homework is excellent, as you can see. Th is that the one that you, you said he'll be talking about continuously? That's the one. Yeah, no, actually, I don't want to talk continuously. I want to see it. And I, I was also told that it is around here. So if... No, we can show it to you. It's right there in that next room. I'll see you guys in a bit. Yeah. If we have rapid fire remaining and great hands. And, and by the way, ADV culture is really catching up in India in motorcycling, and that's what the trampler is going to be all about, and that's why he's gone. Okay, we can get back to the real important questions now. We're we actually uh, going to make this quick. Yeah. We've seen these concepts for years, airless tires. Is that ever going to happen? Is an airless transparent tire? I mean, one has to look at it positively. It's gone from a concept to some use case. Mm -hmm. to much of what is done in the tire is done by the air. And, oh. and then you're saying airless. Uh, when do we want to divorce ourselves of air is something that we have to think about. Airless tires would have their own, own journey and own use cases and all. But the larger mobility as we see as of current visibility that we have on the technology, we are still in love with the air part. Rapid fire. We are, we are coming to the end part of this uh, whole uh, tate a tate with you. Yeah. Rapid fire it is, you will not be thinking, you will be answering straight of, uh, as soon as the question is asked. What is your best selling tire currently? Alnec. Name three features that Apollo tires have in India. Quality, technology, reliability. Books or movies? Books any day. Please. What's the phenomenon of uh, a tire losing grip on watery surface called? Aquaplaning. Uh, which auto manufacturer do you like the best for your tires? This one I can't take favorites. <laughs> 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 all my customers. We okay. didn't take favorites between Cyrus and I either. So I'll skip this one. No, no, I offered you a game of golf. <laughs> <laughs> Rally or tarmac racing? Rally. So that came straight from the heart. Uh, top two reasons why someone should purchase an Apollo tire. We get the best technology to you at a very honest place. Right. One feature that you would love to have in Apollo tires in the coming future. Amplify performance from where it is today to whatever is more relevant tomorrow. Two wheels or four? Four. Yes. That else came from the heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Good that Karthik is not here to hear that. <laughs> uh, a special memory of you and your experience at Apollo Tires. Difficult to choose anyone, but I would say uh, there was a time we did 1700 crores. Now we are at 14,000 something. So. That, that was a very special milestone. When we became self-reliant in technology and we divorced ourselves with the joint venture that we had entered with Mishnah. The most valuable lesson you've learned 
from the tire industry and from Apollo in general? I would say the reinvention. The tire industry has been reinventing itself. I'm very proud of the fact that we are a very matured industry. We Not many countries can boast of a tire industry like us. We are self-reliant. Last question, and I'll, uh, this comes from my personal interest here. Uh, now that he's gone, sir, uh, who would you choose, Karthik or Rohan? <laughs> I think he doesn't play golf. He just can't play golf. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I ain't answering this one. This <laughs> Since Karthik is not here. Robert. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's what I say. I give you the cue. Thank you so much for answering, patiently answering our questions. And thank you for giving us the wisdom here. Uh, last thing, if you can tell our young audience out here who are connecting with Apollo Tires, how do they build themselves in life to become someone like you? Yeah, I, I think it's not very complicated. Uh, I, I really believe in the next generation of our country. And I'm sure you, your pursuit towards excellence will take you to very great heights. My best wishes to each one of you. With that, I think if you allow us, we will conclude this tete a tete the conversation. It was a very different uh, <laughs> interview. I really enjoyed spending the time with you. And it's our pleasure. Thank you so much for having us.